Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna do our daily technical analysis update of commodities. <clears throat> I'll give you my financial opinion. We'll work our way through the dollar, yields, precious metals, and then commodities uh, to come. I do have, uh, just for the Platinum members, a reminder, we have a technical analysis, um, technical analysis question and answer session coming up at 5 p.m. Thursday, Mountain Standard Time. So see you there if you're a member. Uh, don't forget about it. And then also we've got a Sunday, uh, 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time question and answer session for the Platinum members, just in general, that we do on our weekly, our weekly updates uh, on that. So let's dive in. Um, we'll start with the dollar. Uh, again, the dollar looks like it is trying to strengthen here. Uh, so we've kind of come on down. You can see these lows basically come here. We've got a little bit higher lows here. Uh, I think if we break on, well, basically doing that almost right now, other currencies look really weak. So that's why I'm kind of also basing it off that. But you can kind of see we're breaking out a little bit there uh, to the upside. I do think that we're going to see strength in the dollar in relationship to other currencies. Um, this is kind of the long-term view. You can see that big old pattern broken to the upside. But short term, we've had a pullback. Uh, here's the pullback there. We do have a wick at the bottom, like it's trying to reverse and move higher. And I do think that we're going to get that move to the upside. This definitely looks like it's trying to turn and move to the upside. You can see the falling wedge. The falling wedge is broken to the upside, and we're starting to stabilize. And eventually, I think we'll move on up. <clears throat> the the ten year yields moving higher. Uh, I know a lot of people are thinking about yields and bonds from the old paradigm. And I don't know if that paradigm's going to hold. Uh, so what, what does that mean? What paradigm am I talking about? The paradigm in this regime here, this one that was going down, that, that regime there, every time we had a slowdown, people ran into bonds. And, and that's what happened during this regime. Now, I don't know if that regime is upset as we broke this to the upside. This is a 40-year New shift to increasing your new shift to increasing interest rate environment. We're moving on higher here, and the Fed is still signaling that they are going to be raising interest rates. So, although we might be seeing weakness in the overall markets, that weakness might be from inflation and interest rates, from in interest rates basically, but the inflation in the system may stick around for a little bit longer, and we may see another rate hike or two. And maybe this is going to go up and do another uh, topping type pattern. We might be too early in, in going long bonds, uh, and the regime may, may have changed a little bit. It may not be the same. I'm not saying I know what the, the new regime looks like. I'm just saying it may not be the same. Uh, bond prices heading lower today, down point. Five nine percent. That still looks like to me that it wants to go lower. Um, I don't see a, a lead-in pattern here where this could be a double bottom yet. Uh, so that is also yet to be seen. I don't see a bottoming pattern in this bond price here. Um, so we could still see downside movement in bond prices to the downside uh, further from where we are today. Uh, TYX, which is a, a thirty-year yields continuing to head higher. And these are basically flat, the 30 and 10 year. So we're not really moving anywhere on that. So the, the curve is remaining um, inverted the way it was before, and the whole curve is just moving up. The CRB index uh, slightly lower today, down 0.4%, not really too much of a movement there. Um, is this a false breakout to the upside where we had lower, or are we going to move and head higher. I think it highly depends on the price of oil. And I don't know in the short term here, guys. The short term is going to get dicey with the overall market heading lower. It could pull commodities down with it. It might not. Oil may run irrespective based off of China reopening. The liquidity in the system is low. They are fighting inflation. They're fighting that oil price with interest rates going up, and they're trying to destroy demand and trying to destroy liquidity in the system. I think that they are being partially successful because they've basically 
stop the housing market in its tracks. With, and, and I think that's from the stimulus money. The stimulus money that came in is stopping it. Not necessarily the interest rates and the level that they put it to, because the interest rate level is determined off of how much money they created during that stimulus money. So we'll see what happens in this next quarter. It's going to be a weird quarter, I think. A difficult one to project. Uh, CRB to S&P 500, uh, basically sideways today. Commodities versus the S&P 500. Uh, we've got gold heading slightly lower. We do have a little bit of selling pressure yesterday. That's what the wick is. And we have a little bit today. Uh, which way is this thing going to go? Um, we'll find out here tomorrow. Uh, this still looks okay to me. I don't, I don't see it being bullish or bearish at this time. Uh, it's the bulls and the bears fighting back and forth here. Uh, if we see this start to squeeze up, then I would definitely say uh, we could go lower. It's a rising wedge, but right now it's a channel heading higher. Uh, silver getting a little bit more selling pressure. This is a bearish engulfing that usually results in itself going lower. Uh, so I do think that this could see a little bit of short-term uh, pullback. Uh, I would have said the same thing here, though. Right there, I would have said the same thing. That's a bearish engulfing pattern. So now we have two of them. Are the sellers going to kind of push this lower in the short term? It's very well possible. Uh, platinum down 12 bucks, uh, down 1.23%. Uh, it's still in this channel, still looking all right. That's not a huge down day compared to this massive bullish engulfing here. Uh, so I, I, I still remain bullish on this. We've got a bullish engulfing here and here. Those kind of stack up. Another one here kind of. Not much selling pressure. So I still think that the path of least resistance is higher in platinum. And platinum likes to trade with inflation. It likes to trade with oil. It likes it a lot. Uh, XAU to gold ratio, we're right at that resistance line. We are still uh, bumping heads there. There's that resistance line I'm talking about. You can draw it all the way back. Uh, I'll grab it back and show you. There's also resistance all through here. There's some here. There's some through here. We use this line. It's, it's actually a quick, pretty strong line. We're trying to get through it at this, at this time. And right now, we're just bouncing our head and bouncing off to the downside from that resistance. GDX also coming up against resistance. It's just selling off. And then SILJ selling off a little bit. We're all kind of underneath that resistance on all these different charts. So uh, it's going to take some time for us to get through. And we got to see strength in the silver market. The silver market right now looks a little bit weak. We could see a little bit of a pullback in the short term. Crude oil down 1.11%. Not a bad day. Not a bad day. Now, why would I say not a bad day? Because everything else sold off more than it, for the most part. We're in this big, gigantic kind of falling wedge if you start here, there, and there. And then we've got these three points that are potentially coming up. Um, usually, you need more than two points to get, have a trend line. So it's kind of a premature um, falling wedge right now. But we have a wick at the bottom. It is a hammer candlestick. So they tried selling it off, and buyers came in and bought it back up. So that is at least somewhat bullish there on um, the physical price of crude. Natural gas is also getting a wick. Um, we've got support. So if you, if you contact this point, this point, that point, and this point, and you come on through, we're right at that support level that coincides with the 440. We came back and touched it and bounced off that support level for natural gas. Uh, I still think this, the Livermore cylinder is still intact. Uh, I think we could go higher from here. I like it down here for natural gas. XOP, yeah, you know me, it is heading a little bit lower. Are we going to see this kind of fall, fall down here and sell off? It is a high probability. We have large selling pressure here, and we have not really made a big bounce. We're consolidating. Now, this could consolidate sideways and then work its way higher. We could also see this come back a little bit more, maybe down here, for a last final sell-off. Both of those options are open still. Because we've got this large selling pressure day to day, and we've got the momentum from before. And I'm not sure if that momentum's necessarily worked off yet. We also see OIH. This is in a uh, increasing kind of uh, rising wedge. We've got a bearish engulfing here. We came on down, and now we're, we're going. And now we can see that this is just not breaking. It's not breaking higher. 
We had a sell-off today. So it is possible that this does break out and head back lower down to this vicinity back there, which gives us a better buying opportunity for energy service companies. Looking at um, the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust, we are just moving sideways. Again, we've got this large selling pressure, large selling pressure. The buyers haven't stepped in yet and kicked us out of this channel yet. Doesn't mean they can't. We, we've got a bullish candlestick to, uh, yesterday, little wick at the top with some selling pressure, and today it could be considered a bloody nose where we could break out. Again, these are all based off statistics and probabilities. What are those probabilities? You're talking 60%, something on the lines of that for these short-term um, moves, 60%, 70%. Which direction is this going to break? I would say I'm neutral on it because our lead-in has good momentum over here with good strong selling pressure. We are seeing the characteristics of the candlesticks change on the right-hand side where the green candlestick is engulfing the one before it, which is a bullish engulfing with a, with a bloody nose. That in the short term is bullish with, with some, we'll call it, previous baggage, which is still momentum negative. So we've got the two forces fighting each other right now. URNM uh, down 3.3%. I don't think it looks that bad. It wants to come up here. Uh, we've got a falling wedge in the short term that we've broken. A lot of the times they like to do a back test down here, which it could be doing right now. I don't like seeing a large down candlestick like that, but I mean, it still signals. I still see a bunch of red candlesticks all through here. Uh, I like seeing the big green, the big green army come in, small red down candlesticks. Uh, but the, the selling pressure is remaining in URNM. It's not going away uh, yet. So I very well could see this dive lower with the amount of red candlesticks I see just in this right hand corner. I don't see too much green candlesticks through here, even though we have a little bit of a falling wedge. So we'll see which way this thing breaks. Uh, TAN still selling off the overall markets and higher interest rates and higher dollar. It's not liking any of that. Uh, but overall, you know, sell off today. Uh, COPX also selling off a little bit. Uh, one of the stronger sectors compared to most, uh, but it is down a little bit. We do have this kind of bearish piercing, bearish engulfing there. We haven't seen buyers push this higher, really. We've got another bearish engulfing here. I do think we're going to head lower in the short term. So lower in the short term for COPX. Uh, looking at lithium, LIT. Uh, definitely looks like it's wanting to go lower. Uh, I don't think this is done going lower yet. There's the big red candlestick on the monthly. Another big red candlestick here. And the buying pressure just isn't there. Uh, I think we are going to head lower and probably do a retest of this line down here. That is where I'm going to load up for lithium stocks. Um, we do have a big long basing pattern here. And basically, you get a breakout, then you get a retest here, something on the lines of that. Uh, and that would be a perfect spot to be looking at, at adding. REMX is also selling off. You can see on the monthlies here, we've got a lot more selling pressure there. I do think we could see further downside. Uh, we're down 3.45%. The weeklies look pretty strong to the downside. And it looks like that's going to continue. I don't see any um, positive signals of that turning around yet. Uh, SPX uh, heading lower. Uh, we had the rising wedge. We popped out to the downside, and we still have selling pressure. Uh, increasing dollar, increasing interest rate environment. The S&P does not like that. Does not like that. Neither does the NASDAQ. That is still heading lower. Uh, it looked like to me that the markets were pricing in a, a, a monetary weakening. Uh, Powell said, no, we're not going to weaken. What are you talking about? And this is what's pursuing next is a lower um, price in NASDAQ and also in the S&P 500. Uh, I think that will continue as long as interest rates go higher. Uh, if, if we continue to stay in an inflationary environment and interest rates continue to go higher, I suspect that the, uh, the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 will continue lower. Uh, emerging markets also heading a little bit lower. Uh, it looks like it wants to head on down a little bit with the overall markets. I don't see, we still have selling pressure through here and today, which makes me think we, we've got a little bit more downside left. Uh, XHB, which is the home builder selling off today, down 2%. A lot of these areas are selling off. Uh, this does look like it's trying to put in some sort of double bottom. And maybe uh, it's prematurely doing that. Maybe we've got some more downside with the rates going up. 
Uh, Mu is also heading lower. Um, I don't really have too much. I don't really have any money in Mu, but uh, to me, let's back out here real quick. To me, it looks like we could still head lower and come back to this little area, just like lithium. Looking at copper future pricing, we're at that resistance line. Uh, we're dang dangling around with it. Uh, we're, we're kind of coming up into this squeezing up session here. Uh, we'll see which way we break. Right now, I'm going to remain open. We're at support resistance. And if we can break out of this, we can get a big move higher. This could also be a bearish uh, flagging pattern where we actually break to the downside. And if the overall market continues to head lower with increasing interest rates. I mean, people may think that the demand will get hit in copper, but we also have a counterbalancing force known as China reopening. Which ones, which way is it going to break? Good, good question. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what the price action does. Uh, lumber uh, being resilient, where you've got this really skinny, long falling wedge that usually is bullish to head on higher. Uh, I do see positive movements here with more buying pressure than selling pressure coming down. See how fast these impulses are pumping the, the um, lumber price higher and then the small selling off, the leak off of the sellers. Makes me think that uh, lumber wants to go higher. Uh, lumber is an input for new home builds. And new home builds, um, usually with the lumber price going up, it's positive because new home builds are pulling that lumber. We are seeing a slowdown in the housing market. We are seeing higher interest rates, and that could put pressure on the housing market for a while. When interest rates go back down or mortgage rates go back down, and we see maybe stimulus or an easing in monetary at some point, and I don't know when that point is, it might be a quarter out, you know, three months or six months out or something like that, I think this will reverse and move on up. And this could be a, a leading indicator where this will break before that happens. Uh, looking at iron, uh, iron ore, uh, we're up 0.14%, uh, basically just flat today. If it if it decides to come on up, <clears throat> there it is, flat. Looking at nickel, nickel's flat today as well. I still think that this looks good for a move higher uh, over time. Uh, aluminum uh, down 1.45% today. We are still above that support level. Uh, I like it right where it's at uh, personally. Uh, looking at Baltic dry index down a little bit. Uh, I don't know if that updated from yesterday, but I think we're going to do a return move of this breakout before heading higher. Uh, we've got Newcastle coal just moving sideways again, right at that resistance. We got to break through that if it wants to move on up. Uh, our liquidity measures uh, in the market: Ethereum down. Same with Bitcoin down two percent. Uh, are we going to break out of this pattern to the downside, or is this thing going to work its way on up? Uh, this is more or less just a function of liquidity in the market. Uh, and that's why I look at it right now, saying that liquidity is down. And we can also see that in the M2 money supply. We can see that in total bank credit. Uh, it's down from its highs. So uh, that's what we've got for today, guys. Uh, a lot of selling pressure today. Uh, again, um, I think oil probably looks the strongest in, and natural gas. I know it was down a lot today, but we're getting a, a bounce. We're at support. We're bouncing off that support. Um, that's usually where I start to get watching it. And then if we get a nice, good kind of move sideways, uh, we could see a move on up. So um, I'm watching oil and natural gas. Those are my favorite sectors. Uh, and I think that it's trying to put in a bottom. We'll see if it does. Uh, the overall market, everything else, it's not looking too hot. I think it looks like we could see further pullbacks. Uh, is 2023 going to be similar to 2022 where energy kind of does well and everything else does poorly i don't know let's wait and find out let's see where if we get bounces in the energy markets and and see how sustaining it is uh don't forget too if you're a platinum member i will be doing a midweek update on what i'm doing i uh, give you guys an update and uh, i'll get you updated there uh, so look for that as well all right guys uh, we'll catch you later this is finding value